Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I thought um, it might be interesting today to take a look through the flower beds that I have in my backyard. Um, they're looking pretty nice right now and uh, I thought you might find it interesting, interesting to, to see some of the projects, uh, how they've done and that I've done in the past on videos and see how they're going um, and just see what I have growing in my zone three uh, garden here in uh, southern Saskatchewan. It's the end of July and uh, it's been in the 30s, uh, mid 30s for a lot of uh, this month and we've had no rain to speak of uh, for over a month now I think so these are they're looking pretty good considering the weather con conditions that's what I would say so let's have a look I brought along some cheat sheets I'm not good at remembering what they are but I like to label my uh, plant tags of what I have and where I put them so I usually have notes on them I'll give you a really quick uh, pan through this uh, this flower bed here. This is what I call the the west flower bed in my backyard, and just a real quick pan for reference. Um, just off that way is my cold frame and my uh, gravel area with the large pots that I grow vegetables in. So if you're familiar with my channel, that'll kind of give you a little bit of a an understanding of where we're sitting right now. And then as you go. Cross. And then get right over to my patio area. So let's move in a little closer and uh, have a look at these plants a little bit more close up. This area starts with uh, three Mugo pines that I planted within, I think, the first year or two of moving here. So they've been here for about 10, 11 years now. And there's a Schubert cherry, which is a sour choke cherry, little tiny berries. That was a seedling that came up in my yard that I put there one year. I had a maple before and it got wrecked, so it's doing well. And you can see this little, uh, it's supposed to be a turtle. My friend and I last year tried to build some of these with succulents in them with uh, what we had, not really the right stuff. And eh, they're kind of gawky, but remind me of a fun time. So. so this here is a Veronica um, or a, a Speedwell is what um, I know these plants as the best. Uh, so when you say Veronica grows here, quite often you'll see it labeled as Speedwell here. And this one is called Royal Candles. The pollinators absolutely love these plants and you can see they're almost finished this first flush here. I have come through and cut out a few that were brown all the way up, but um, the next few days I'll come through and I'm just gonna cut all of these off down to uh, pretty much where the leaf growth really starts coming and they will flush right back and I'll get another bloom out of these. Generally, I only get two. Um, we do have a short growing season, 110 days, generally a frost free here. So two, two flushes is, is pretty much what I get out of these, but um, it's pretty good and they look really nice. Like I said, the pollinators are usually all over them. They're not here yet this morning, but they'll be here later, I'm sure. Uh, next to it is a lupin. Now, I believe this lupin is one that was here uh, already last year you might remember I had grown some lupins from seed and I've had a lot of trouble getting lupins to grow in my yard this one is a survivor and uh, it's done done the best and I don't even know what variety it is but it does grow it already had uh, had one bloom stalk that I cut off and it looks like it had a small one here that's set seed and um, I have another one coming 
Now as for the lupins that I planted here last year that I grew from seed, I only had one come back and it's down here in front of the fountain. So I'll give you a little bit closer look at that one there. Um, in behind there I have some phlox. There's a few lilies back here. Um, there's delphiniums that haven't There should be some delphiniums back there. I don't see them. I see one. I have a real ferny one back here. Um, I don't remember the variety of it. I might have a tag. No. So there's a little little guy back there. And uh, I have just planted some of my extra canna bulbs along the back fence. They're not blooming yet, but uh, I was hoping they would grow up and give some height there, but it's just been too hot, hot and dry. Cannas love the heat, but they want more moisture. And, I'm not, um, I try not to water too much in my beds. Um, I try to conserve as much water as I can, so I send it to the most important plants and the rest have to just kind of survive. This is a Wigilia, Wigilia. This is French lace. I renovated this yard um, a few years ago. And when I did that, I pulled two French lace Wigilia out of my, um, my front yard and I put them back here. They just weren't growing well and they weren't doing well in the front yard. And uh, they've been a lot happier. This did not bloom this year for some reason, but we had a really wonky spring. Uh, so I suspect that had something to do with that. But it looks really nice. I love the variegation on the leaves. And it's just a nice uh, kind of focal point to, to kind of draw your eye and calm your eye a little bit in this area with all the can get to be a lot going on with the hanging basket there's three kinds of lilies back here the phlox everything there's a lot of color going on back here so it's nice just to have this this piece here so as we move along here I have um, some decorative sage I've had this I think I moved this here from my old garden so I can't even begin to tell you what it is this is a plant that it has a very strong smell when you work around it. So it's a plant that a lot of people either love or hate. Um, it has a, a definite sage smell. But it gets, again, beautiful. I need to trim these back. This is just the calyx left from the blooms. So I need to trim this back. And again, the pollinators will just love these plants. But I like it because um, even when it's out of bloom, if I don't get to cutting it back right away, it still looks really nice. Um, and you can't really tell that it's out of bloom. Um, until you get up close to it. So I will just come and I'll just cut this back down to the, the next set of leaves and uh, it'll flush out again for me. Behind there is uh, my Cupid cherry. I think uh, if you've seen some of my videos, you've heard a lot about this is a new, new seedling that I planted this year. And uh, it's grown quite a bit actually. It's put on, I think this is where it was when I planted it this spring and it's already put this on by the looks of the, the fresh growth here. Um, behind that we have, um, this is an echinacea that I planted just this spring and this is the baby white swan and I really have no idea if it's hardy in my area or not. The tag does not say but it's really sweet. I, I like this, the white and I really like how it has such a full rounded um, center to it. So it's a very nice um, Echinacea and it's it's a dwarf echinacea, so it's pretty much at its its mature height right now It will fill out side to side a little bit, but it's at that mature height right now behind there are some lilies uh, I Think there's a mix of red and yellow in behind there and they're finished for the for the season. So I've just cut them back uh, The echinacea that I planted last year and I did a video about it. I did three um, Pow wow. I did three powwow white echinacea and they were starting with that one back there which I believe you can see there was one about where the baby swan was and there might have been another one further back and only that one survived and came back this year so I believe yeah so I knew when I planted that and I said in the video that was a zone four plant um, and we're zone three here but I find sometimes um, plant tags say zone four and I think they just never test them 
any lower than that. So sometimes I like to grab a zone four plant, especially something like an echinacea where a lot of them will grow here and throw it in and just see what happens. And um, one came back, so not, not great results and who knows if it'll come back next year, but it is a pretty, a pretty uh, echinacea and it has this, again, the white blooms. These blooms are a little bit smaller and you can see how the center on, on the uh, baby, the white swan is, is more rounded, whereas those are a more flat top. So it's nice, they're similar, but they're just a little bit different. And the uh, powwow will get a little bit, you can see it's a little bit taller. This is a, a hydrangea. This is the uh, a lava lamp hydrangea. Uh, it's called candelabra. And it starts out with these beautiful white blooms. And it has these gorgeous red stems on it. And as the, as the season progresses, these blooms will actually change color to uh, a deep pink, or they call it red on the tag, but I would call it a really deep kind of pink color. And uh, I really like how that changes. It kind of changes the dynamic of the bed a little bit as the year goes, the season goes on. And even without the blooms, I really like how they have this, uh, this nice bright green with the deep red on the, on the new stems. So it's a really nice uh, hydrangea. And I've had this one for a few years. If you're going to grow hydrangeas in this climate, you really need to be prepared to give it water. So this is one of the plants that I do come in at least a couple times a week and give several gallons of water to. Um, they really, they need a lot of water, especially to produce these blooms and stay healthy looking. They will grow without the water, but they'll be a lot smaller. They probably won't bloom for you. And uh, they won't be as healthy, which makes it harder to get them through the winter. I pile snow up when the light snows come, I pile snow up over these in the winter and I always make sure they have a good layer of, of mulch around the base of my hydrangeas for the winter. You may notice a lot of kind of dead brown looking stuff back in here. And that is this dianthus. Um, and uh, I've just been, it's, I had it all along the front of this flower bed and it was really kind of blending in with the grass and I didn't like that. So I've been slowly just yanking up chunks of it, tossing it back here. I just tossed it in, see what happens. And um, it is starting to root in. Now there's lots that are dead and dying off, but it is starting to root back in back here. And I think it'll be a good mulch for these plants that want more, more um, water conservation because it's going to be a little bit of a living mulch around the base. They don't need a lot of water, but they'll, um, they'll keep water from evaporating off the base. How, and they do hold, there's usually, it's usually damp underneath these um, for quite a while after they've been watered. So I'm gonna continue just pulling them up and like really I just yank a chunk out like that and I've just been like throwing it like that. And uh, usually the roots will just root down through the mulch and everything. The mulch isn't real heavy in this bed yet. I haven't uh, added new mulch yet to this this year to this bed. And once I'm done moving all this back, then I'll come along and do that. So right beside the hydrangea, I have some phlox or um, Sweet William, I think is another name for these. Um, and these grow really big and full in the spring. They get these gorgeous blooms on them. And right now it looks like all I have is these kind of deeper pinky red blooms, but they have, I have some that are white with this same color stripe in them and some that are a paler pink you might be able to see the real pale pink on this one some of them are that paler pink and they're all just kind of mixed in here i'm not sure how it wound up just this color right now but it's a very large clump it grows up in the spring and uh, i find it gets a little a little out of control and starts to kind of flop and do crazy things um, uh, later in the spring and so i just chop it right back and then I get another another flush and it stays a little shorter and a little more manageable. So that's how I like to deal with a, a plant like that. It likes to get really big. It's beautiful, but it flops out and uh, starts to look a little bit crazy. So just give her a chop in late spring and it'll come back a lot of them and give you this better look here. Um, behind that, there's a Hicks U. 
Uh, I really wanted some Hicks Hughes growing in this flower bed to give some evergreen height, but this is my third one for this bed here, and uh, it's the only one that seems happy here. It, this one here must be getting just enough shading from the other plants and maybe some water from the hanging basket above it or something that uh, it's just a little bit happier here. I used to try and grow them over. I'll show you a little further down the bed, but I've just given up and moved them both out of here. There's a, a liatris back there. This is a, a white liatris. So if you can see those spikes coming there, they're going to flush out in white blooms all along those, those uh, spikes coming up here pretty soon. This is one of my cafe dahlias that I planted in a video earlier and it's just about to pop a bloom out, say in about a week maybe. And there's two more coming. I'm not sure if there's any more on this one. Looks like there might be some in the back looking to come out here. So there, my dahlias seem to be blooming a little bit later this year. Usually I would have had blooms um, in July and we're at the end of July and I've only had one one bloom off of some other dahlias uh, but it's been a really it was a really weird spring and it's been a really hot summer and I think that's affecting them right here I have this is a turtle's head Chilone maybe is how you pronounce the the real name for it um, and it'll get these really pretty pink blooms in here it's kind of like um, the blooms of an obedient plant but bigger kind of like a cross maybe between a, a snapdragon and an obedient plant, <laughs> but bigger and uh, they're a pinky purple, just a real light color, really pretty. And they fill this in. I got this from my neighbor and also this sedum and I'm not sure which sedum this is. It's uh, looking a little rough right now as I've been digging up and moving things around it, but uh, it gets these really pink blooms on it and I just love sedums. It's really nice. There's another sedum in here. This one's yellow. This one just seems to grow like a weed all around my yard. Um, beside these plants, there's another uh, Cafe Ole Dahlia, and it's looking like it's going to have a bloom coming here in the next week and a half, two weeks too. And it actually has more branching on it, so it's going to have a few more. In behind the uh, Dahlia, I have some Echinacea. I believe this is a purple coneflower echinacea, like just a pretty generic, I'm not sure, I don't have a name tag for it. There's some obedient plant back there that's uh, starting to bloom a little bit. It's a nice kind of white pinkish bloom back there. And another liatris, another white one. There's another cafe au lait. It's just starting to form those, those buds there on the top. This is a bobo hydrangea. It gets these gorgeous full bloom heads. And they kind of have a lime green tinge to them. It's just a nice smaller stature hydrangea. Um, I don't have trouble with it flopping. I have nothing supporting it, uh, but it gets really full. You can just see how many, how many bloom heads are on it. I have another little hydrangea tucked in the back here. I just moved it this year. It was getting overcrowded by uh, some other some other plants there and it was just pretty much in complete darkness so hopefully it'll take root now and do better it was actually one that i bought on sale two autumns ago um just really late in the, the summer season early autumn and it was looking pretty rough had no tags i have no idea what variety it is other than i know it's not a paniculata uh, so it must be i believe it's arborescence is the other hydrangea that'll grow here um, so by the leaf structure, I think it was the arborescence that I saw, um, that looks like that's what it is. Um, and it's put on more growth. So, okay. So future me here, uh, I was editing this video and going through photos and different things, trying to get all the correct names of as many plants as I could for you. And I came across a photo of an arborescence, uh, hydrangea tag and I uh, remember now purchasing this. I'd totally forgotten I'd purchased this um, last spring. The one I had planted uh, that I'd purchased, that I talk about in the video here, that uh, I purchased on sale at the end of season, it didn't come back up. 
But anyway, so this is a, an Invincible Mini Movet that I planted last spring. And uh, it, like I said before, it wasn't uh, growing well in the space I had it in. So I moved it here where it should get a little bit more light. Um, next year, the, uh, the dahlia won't be here, so it'll, it'll get more light in, this, in the morning there. And it's definitely doing better since I moved it already. So, but I just thought I'd add that in real quick is uh, this I purchased last spring and planted. Um, so hopefully it'll settle in here and uh, we'll be able to show you a, an Invincible Mini Movet next year. So. There's a little bit more of that phlox here. And again, this is that Dianthus I've thrown back and it looks really ratty right now, but there is some green coming. So I'm just kind of leaving it and uh, we'll see what happens with that. It's not the most beautiful thing to look at right now, but hopefully next season we'll have some flocks growing in back there, uh, which will look better than it just smashing out into the grass and me hitting it with a lawnmower. It was kind of getting a mullet look with the front end being hit with the lawnmower and the trimmer as I tried to do the grass and the back end was tall and full of blooms. It was looking really gangly. Um, can't remember if I mentioned another Cafe Au Lait back there. I think I talked about that. I have an echinacea that seems to have put itself right here and then some lilies and uh, it continues into some day lilies. So let's, let's keep sliding the camera along here. So this is my cherry tree that I grew from cuttings. I did just come and do a pretty severe prune on it. Um, it should be okay, but it was getting just the branches were going every which way, covering all the plants, and they were actually kind of getting broken off um, in here from the wind and me trying to get to the watering, I guess. I don't know, but so just pruned up because I want it to go up higher, and it was kind of developing about three main leaders, so I'm hoping that uh, I can get this to be the main leader now and uh, get it to, to behave a little better. Right here is an Oenothera um, evening primrose. So this gets beautiful yellow blooms. They're done now. Um, and it might flush some more out later, but I'm not sure with it being so dry, it doesn't like the dry. It's right here by my rain barrel hose, so usually I can give it a little bit of water, but there's no water in the rain barrel. Um, so it's not getting as much nice watering here as it usually does. And then you might, uh, might have seen a video where I planted a bunch of snapdragons, an acid and thera back in here. And so those tall kind of spiky leaves are the acid and thera. They haven't started to bloom yet, but they will soon. You can see some starting to put the spikes out for the blooms. And the snapdragons are looking gorgeous in there. There's also a daylily back here. And I'm just drawing a blank on what this plant is, but I'll put it up. Rebecca, maybe? Um, I'll put it up on the screen. So in behind here, there's another um, daylily. And uh, I've put a, a, a bug loss in back there that I'm hoping will grow a spike up next year. I believe the first year it just, I grew it from seed, so I think it's just gonna grow a format, a rosette of leaves in there. So that's etchy and rust come. You can't see it, but next year, hopefully I'll have some big red spikes of blooms coming up out of there. Um, and then um, I have some more, this is the last of the uh, Cafe Ole Dahlias that I planted. And uh, it's looking really nice and it looks too like it's just starting to, to push some buds. So I'll get some blooming on those soon. Uh, this is an Anise Hyssop. And I'm pretty sure I didn't plant it here. So I'm thinking the wind or the birds or something has put this here. I have some in other parts of my yard. Um, it's a, a good pollinator plant, lots of blooms. I should cut these off and it'll bloom again. But it's a really nice plant. It has kind of a, I don't know, kind of a different smell to it. So I'm not sure some people might not love it. So as you look down in this area, I have a couple of um, hostas and I'm, I've had those hostas forever. And I'm not sure what the variety of them is. Right between the hostas kind of in back a little bit is a Wigilia or Wigilia. Uh, and this one is uh, Minuet, and it's one that I purchased. Um, I had a group of three under um, one of my ash trees for years, and as the ash tree grew, they just 
were getting too shaded out and they weren't growing. Um, but this one still had some life in it, so I stuck it in there and it should get a little bit more sun in that area. Um, still might not be enough, but that's where I put it for now. So as we wait to see if that's going to fill in there, I have a little bit of a, an obelisk and I have some sweet peas on it. They're absolutely beautiful. So this is just kind of another angle of that, here, Foster, of that space that, uh, come over here, come over here, of that space we were just looking at. And this is another uh, paniculata hydrangea and, um, and a buster. Buster, you need to move. Go lay down. Go. And this is when I had purchased that other one that's uh, not looking so good. Um, I had purchased this at the same time. So um, I'm not sure what varieties they are. I'm guessing this might be a limelight or a little lime maybe. This is the best it's been for me and this is its second summer here now and uh, it's the best it's ever looked for me. And it's got these really nice full full uh, heads and it has this little bit of lime chartreuse color in the bloom so that's why I suspect it's a limelight or a little lime just for the size of the bloom heads, the size of the plant. That's my guess. Um, again, lots of water on these. Any of my hydrangeas, they get, they get the water attention. There's a daylily in behind there, some more regular lilies. Um, I have a pot here with some sunflowers and uh, African daisies. So they're, they're a little water stressed, but I don't always remember them when I'm watering. In behind there is another Wigilia. Um, Purple Prince, I think. Again, bought that on sale probably seven years, maybe longer ago. It looked like a dead plant. It is listed as a zone four and it loves its life there. I chop it back um, quite often. Most years I, I give it a really good chopping back to kind of just keep it in check here. We do get some winter dieback on it, but it always flushes back really nice in the spring and usually covered in blooms. Again, this year it just bloomed really, really low down. It does bloom on new wood. And uh, I think just being a funny spring, it just didn't bloom well. None of my, uh, none of my Wigilias bloomed well this year, but I think it was just the odd spring we had. I'm just gonna run through this bed real quick here. Uh, so there's that the flower pot with the sunflowers and the Wigilia behind it. I have a trellis. Uh, with a honeysuckle, a lonicera in it. Um, there's also some, it's supposed to be a climbing um, nasturtium and some sweet peas on it. And you can see uh, poppies all over in the front there and they just, I just let them do their thing wherever they like. I sprinkle the seeds kind of, I sprinkle them all summer and then I sprinkle them again late winter, early spring and just see what comes up. I did plant some hostas in there Right now the other plants are kind of overtaking them in that corner. And then as you come across here, I have some gladiolas in the back. That's what the spikes are. And I actually planted those, oh, I think about six weeks before my average last frost date. I'd read you could do that and I was curious. So I tried it in a few parts of my yard and they've all come up. None of them have bloomed yet, but uh, some of them on the other part of the yard are starting to push bloom spikes. So. Apparently you can plant gladiolas really early on when it's still quite cold. Uh, this is the Alchemelia mollies. Um, can't think of the common name offhand, but I planted these in a video last year. You can see those yellow, yellowish flowers there. So they've kind of had their biggest show, but I, I really like the leaves. Um, there's some anemone blonda in behind there that's already bloomed and you might see some fluffy seed heads. There's a buster again. There's a hanging basket here. I never actually showed this in my hanging basket videos. Just has some lobelia. There was a, a fuchsia. There is a fuchsia in there, but it's not really doing much. And then some dichondra hanging down and it's looking really nice there. Then again, just uh, some hostas. I have some alliums that bloom here. This area is full of um, tulips and daffodils in the spring. And I have some penny black, I think they're called just little um, annuals. 
that I threw in there. Some ferns. Uh, there's the sapoglosis that I grew this year. Maybe let's go back there and uh, you can have a, a look at those. So hopefully you can hear me over the air conditioner running. Um, there's the sapoglosis blooms. So those were plants. Um, if you follow along with my videos, you may have seen me talking about them and I was planting them, the seeds this year inside. So they're just absolutely a beautiful flower and they're a great cut flower too. They last quite a while. So lots of ferns, obedient plant. There's actually some sedum back in there. This little corner here gets a lot of um, sun. So you see the one, I just have not found anything that wants to grow in that hot, dry little spot there. Um, and then there's a clematis. There's a columbine back in there as well, but uh, the uh, leaf miners have taken it out for the season now. And then another honeysuckle vine. And there's some sweet peas in there as well. That's the flower bed we were just <clears throat> looking at that swoops down along and continues down beside the patio where all the uh, ferns and hostas and all that was. And then when you come along the other side of the video of the patio, wait, oh, there's a big ash tree here. So under the ash tree, I have again, a couple of um, hostas planted. And I'll see if I can find the varieties for you, but I have one just there and there's another one over that way. And then there's three hydrangeas. And these are the quick fire hydrangeas. So there's one there one there and one just back there and you can see um, it's looking like I need to put some water on these they haven't been watered in a couple days so they're they're looking like they're needing some water and they didn't bloom this year I just put these in here last summer um, so I'm not sure how they'll do because they're not going to get a ton of sunshine here uh, this is where those uh, Wigilia were and they weren't happy here with this amount of light but the sun does slide in here usually in the morning, kind of under the tree, and then again coming the other way in the afternoon. So I just thought I would try it and see how they do. And if I don't get blooms in the next, next summer, then I might have to put them somewhere else. But um, I definitely can see they need water. And then I just have some Nicotiana um, and Cleome and some petunias uh, planted in here just that I, I grew those from seed and had extra plants so I just kind of popped them in here. Right now we're in front of that bed uh, where the ash tree is with the uh, three hydrangeas under it and we're just looking over towards the other side of my yard and I have a snow spring, spring snow, something like that, crab apple and that's the pollinator garden right there that you've seen me do a lot of planting in. Um, and then there's a flower bed that continues on up towards the house and my shade garden. So let's go over to the pollinator garden, have a quick look. We were just over there in a recent video planting some things. So we'll have a real quick look over there and uh, move along and hopefully the lighting isn't too bad in this. If you just see what we're doing here. So here we are at what I call my uh, pollinator garden. Um, dill growing here. Butterflies love this. There's some shorter irises that grow along the front here. Um, they were given to me from somebody who received them from somebody else so I have no idea what kind they are. But they're short when they bloom in the spring and uh, they're really pretty. Just a nice little pop of color in the spring. There's also daffodils and a few tulips in here um, early on in the, the spring as well. And then um, I have a clump of random grass that I'm just letting grow here to see what it turns into because I had some drop seed in here a few years ago and I think I pulled it out by mistake so I'm just curious to see what this turns into and uh, if it's something that I want to keep or not. I have a couple of asters, lots of bachelor's buttons just popped in here. That's the uh, powwow wildberry echinacea that I planted in a recent video and then there's a few um, zinnias I believe they're from the raspberry lemonade um, pack of zinnias, so they're a nice mix of colors. I'm really enjoying that uh, 
that mix of colors from that one. There's some yarrow, some lilies. There's another Lanocera here. Um, I have my, my milkweed, uh, this onion that I just let go here. And we'll kind of pop over to the other side so you can kind of see what's going on over there. So here's another Speedwell or Veronica. Um, I believe this one is called Red Fox. There's a bee working on it right now, so we'll try not to bother him. But again, um, there's some new shoots coming out, but there's some old ones that I could come back and, and cut them out, and that'll just encourage more, more shoots to come off of it. I have some Maltese Cross in the back, which is kind of a red, kind of flat-headed, but curved uh, plant back there. Hopefully you can see that. There's some Joe Pie back there, um, some more Anise Hyssop, a random lily that just put itself there. Um, that area gets pretty shady, so um, I'm thinking of moving that Joe Pie out of there um, because I don't think it's, it doesn't really bloom well for me and I think I could find a better spot for it um, somewhere else in the yard. Uh, there's a daylily. I have some, oh, there's the hookara. That's a purple petticoats hookara. I don't know how you can see it there. Um, that I planted last summer, I think. And it's not loving its life, I have to say that. I think it's a little bit dry right there for it. Um, so we'll see, and it had a really rough time with our severe up and down temperatures that we had this spring. It came out really nice, got frosted, came out again, got frosted. So um, I'm not sure how well it's gonna do. Again, that was another one that I believe was kind of an iffy zone four plant, so we'll see. Lots of Nicoshana um, that I grew from seed here. That was grown from seed that I collected from plants here last year. So you'll see that scattered all over. There's a bee balm or monarda right there. Um, there's a clematis that's kind of in the shade, so it's, it's going, but I'm not sure how well it'll do. Uh, and I'm not sure what you're seeing now. I may have gotten past your view. So as we travel past that uh, Monarda there, there's another lily. I think this one was a mix of uh, reds and yellows. They have the cul Culver's root that I just planted recently in a video. Uh, some more dill here. This is uh, some sort of a weed that comes up. I think it's some sort of persicaria. Uh, but most years I have some sort of worm that comes along and just eats those right back. So obviously something is enjoying them in my yard. So I've been trying to just kind of let them be. Uh, there's a beautiful foxglove in back there and a little bit of monarda that's moved itself over this way. Some random poppies and more foxgloves. Uh, Daylily, this is a Stella Doro and it looks like I need to come in and do some deadheading on it. There's another clematis right there. Uh, I think that again is that what I think is Montana. I have a couple of those here and they kind of drop seeds everywhere and I just let them grow. There's another uh, clematis there, that's Rhapsody. It's a really pretty clematis. Um, then I have the uh, Dwarf Alberta Spruce, and there's another one down along the way here. And again, more of those foxgloves that I planted this, uh, this spring that I grew from seed, and a random zinnia. There's irises that uh, grow up in here in the spring and look really nice and tulips and things. These tall strappy spikes coming out of the ground, that's the other gladiola that I planted early on this spring, well before my last frost date. And uh, they're all coming up and I'm pretty sure one of them I saw a flower spike just starting on. So if I see it, I'll, I'll show it to you. There is a little peony down in here. Behind there's a zinnia in front there and then behind there there's a little peony. Um, and I think I knocked off some of its shoots this spring when I was trying to move some mulch off of it and broke it. So it hasn't done much this year, but I think that was my fault. And it's, it's a red peony and that's all it was labeled as. So red peony. More, um, is it Cleome? I can't remember if, what that plant is. I grew from seed there. How sad is that? But um, they're coming up there. That's that ferny foliage. Another clematis. Uh, in the front here is thyme. I think this is, I'm going to say woolly thyme. Might be mother of thyme. Um, it's a really nice ground cover. 
and uh, I actually don't mind it creeping up to the grass here. I find when I when it gets cut with the, the whipper snipper and the lawnmower and that it doesn't um, doesn't leave such an odd looking structure as with the dianthus and it smells really good when I'm doing the grass so I kind of like it there it will creep into the grass a little bit um, so be aware of that uh, I've actually thought sometimes about just replacing the grass with with thyme because it's such a nice ground cover the bees love it there's more um, more glads here it looks like I have a maybe a Rubecchia that's self-seeded itself. I think that might be mountain mint or else it's anise hyssop there. This is another peony. This is Kansas Troubles, I want to say. Can't remember. There's that other Alberta, Dwarf Alberta spruce. This one's got kind of a crazy look going to it there. I'm hoping it'll fill out. It had a little die back right in here after this winter and it is flushing back out so hopefully it's it's a better shape right now it looks like it's pointing at the sky um, I can't remember what that clematis is there on the fence I'll find the tag for it there's some nasturtiums about down there as well but they're not doing much then I have some obedient plant that's the, the bigger plant right there there's a rose in behind. Um, I'll put it on the screen. I have the tag for it. I just can't remember the name of it right offhand. And again, there's some more glads right there. There's some lilies that are done back in there. There's some more nice hyssop behind the rose. And then just kind of a real menagerie of random plants that I grew from seed and planted here. I have some poppies that just grew really tiny down in there, right in there. And uh, I'm not sure why they grew so so small in there, but they did. And I have some more um, hostas along by the by the bird bath there, and more in behind. So this is another ash tree. Uh, and uh, we'll go around to the other side of it and I'll just show you what I have growing there. The light's a little bit funny on these right now, but uh, these are rhododendrons here. Uh, they're a PJM type of rhododendron. They do grow well here, uh, but they need a lot of water again. Rhododendrons are really, their, their roots are right at the surface. So they have lots of mulch on them and they can't be drying out too much here. Um, mine will brown off and die back, whereas in a, a more a warmer climate they would stay evergreen and uh, they do bloom for me every spring, but they're, they haven't grown a whole lot. These have been here for close to 10 years now, though I did realize a few years ago they were getting chlorosis and I didn't realize that so now I come in and I treat them with an acidifier and uh, that has actually had them they've probably doubled in size in two years uh, just from me doing that so I just come in about every three weeks with uh, an acidifier like you would buy for hydrangeas uh, or other acid loving plants and Apparently the rhododendrons, I don't know if they're actually an acid loving plant or if this area here is just really alkali or what, but uh, they, they definitely have liked that. So I'd say if you're growing rhododendrons and you know you have the other conditions right, but they're still just not quite taking off, look at those leaves, see if they're yellow with the really deep green um, veins in them and uh, maybe, maybe you just need to add some acidifier. Hi, Buster. You really want to be here, hey? Yeah? There's again another hosta. That's one of the new hostas I planted this year. There was another one by the walkway there. Some more salpaglosis. So there's more of these salpaglosis blooms here. And so these are those plants I grew from seed. I really like them and they grow well in shade um, or part shade. 
<laughs> this flower pot. This had lettuce in it, and I just pulled it out. It had bolted, um, and I'm just waiting um, a little bit here, and then I'll I'll plant it up with some more lettuce. But that's why I have this empty flower pot there. I'll give you a tour of all the other pots another day. This is already long enough. This will be the last area that I tour you through here um, in my backyard. There are other places that have plants and things, but this is long enough. And these are kind of the, the main areas that I've focused on over the last few years. But uh, this is my shade garden. It's the morning right now, so there's some sun on it. This is a, a hydrangea here. And uh, it's usually the hydrangea that does the best in my yard. It's a good block of morning sun. It's right by the hose, so whenever I'm using the hose, I just drop a little water on it. And it's fairly protected from the winter winds back here. This year, it took a little bit longer to get going. Um, I'm not sure why that was, but again, we had a really, really wacky spring, and I don't know if for some reason that one just, this was affected by that more, but it's looking good now, and it's gonna flush some blooms, so I'm hopeful for it. This is an Astrantia and it's at the end of its bloom now. Um, I'll see if I have some photos of it because this is the first year it's really bloomed and done well. And it was gorgeous and I didn't realize it, but Astrantia has a super beautiful, sweet smell to it when it's blooming. I had no idea. This is a one of the hostas that I planted this year and it's looking a little, I don't, I think the water is running past it too fast. So I might have to find a new spot for it. You might be able to see some of the other hostas I planted in behind. And then I have a whole row of hostas and Solomon's seal here that have been here for a couple of seasons now. There's a gorgeous, this I believe is raspberry swirl or something hosta. And I don't know if you can see, the stems are deep raspberry red and it has this gorgeous variegation. I used this in one of my front pots a few years ago and then planted it out here after in the fall. And it's just absolutely beautiful. And then the, a stilby are blooming. So I have one there. Another one in behind. And another little one over there, it's struggling a bit. You can see, I said I had to move some of those. I had to move some of the hicks used from that other bed. And if you can see just behind this, Stelby blooms. That's one of them. And it's been really happy there. It looked dead when I put it there. And it's, I think, two years in this spot now. And it absolutely loves it right there. So. Um, knowing that, I moved another Hixu this year, and if you look at that ugly, nasty, brown-looking thing, there is some green in the very back, but I moved it here, and we'll see if maybe this one will come back. This is pretty much what that other one looked like when I moved it here, and it has just grown and looks wonderful, so um, I'm hopeful that maybe this one will settle in with its roots and come back. I just did this maybe a month ago, so. In behind there, I have a gooseneck loose strife, and I've just put it in a pot because um, I really like the plant, I really like the flower heads, um, but I'm just not sure yet how much it will want to take over my garden. I've read a lot of people have trouble with it. We're in a colder zone. It is hardy here, but I just don't know yet, so I'm deciding. But eventually I'll probably actually just dig out a space there and lower that pot down so that it'll help to control the roots a little bit, hopefully, if they decide to get going. But I'll keep it raised up out of the ground a little bit, just because um, I think it can throw its stolons too across the surface. So hopefully I can keep it contained a little bit and enjoy it. Uh, there's some lily of the valley, some ferns. I planted three Brunnera. I purchased the Brunnera at Floral Acres when I did the, the, the uh, powwow wildberry and the culver's root. Um, so there's my shadow for you, but there's Jack Frost and then back there is Looking Glass. And I have another Looking Glass over by the uh, raspberry uh, hosta there. So. I have this big hosta. I have no idea what it's called. It's been here for several years. Uh, there's some more Solomon seal. And then this area has 
some tiarella, which blooms really nice wands of white um, in the spring. There's some little tiny hostas just kind of scattered. There are really tiny little roots that I separated off. Uh, there's some, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Hepatica, that's what it is. So there's some hepatica right here. So this, this gets purple blooms in the, in the spring. Uh, and this is the same thing, it's just difference in light, I think, is why they're a little bit different looking. Um, there's some anemone that's just put itself here. Uh, it can be a little bit weedy. More hostas. There's actually shooting stars here, a diadecathin. Um, so these are real, true spring ephemeral. So they're, they're not, um, they'll come back in the spring, but they're pretty much sleeping. There's another one that's already disappeared in here somewhere, I think right in here. Uh, the bleeding heart. This is a white bleeding heart. There's some creeping dogwood and some trilliums in here. The trilliums um, have kind of disappointed me. I was really excited for the trilliums, but uh, I think it's just maybe because they're not really, this isn't really their climate. And I think, like, here's one here. There's another one behind it. And there's two different varieties, I think, in here. And they'd hardly last at all. And um, yeah, I just, they're not, they're not quite the display I was hoping, but I'm letting them kind of continue to spread out and maybe they'll, they'll get better with age. This is the other looking glass Brunna right here. And there's just a random poppy that put itself here. Some little mouse, little mouse ears hostas down here. It's really, it started to fill in. I'm not super happy with the bleeding heart. I may have to move it back somewhere else because the ferns aren't growing up and filling in behind it like I thought. So there's just kind of a large mound right in the middle. But uh, other than that, I'm happy with how this bed has been coming along. It was supposed to be all white, but it's kind of turned to mostly kind of whites and light pinks and purples. So I know that's a, a pretty long video. Um, probably has taken me about an hour, maybe longer to shoot it now. Um, light change so hopefully I'll see when I edit it uh, hopefully it, it turned out all right for you to see everything um, but I know people are always curious I do a lot of videos about planting things in my flower beds but I don't always remember to give you an update on them so hopefully this showed you a lot of those plants um, at least for my backyard and um, give you kind of a little look an idea of, of what how my yard is laid out maybe too it's hard to do um, but like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, maybe it gave you some inspiration for some planting combinations or plants that you want to try, especially if you're in zone three, you know, often we're told we can't grow things. So maybe there's some things you saw here that you thought, oh, I can grow that. Or maybe you saw things you're like, oh, I grow that a lot better. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.